wonders. You're always doing wonders. Thank you, Father, our El Shaddai, the one who is bigger than the biggest. You are stronger than the strongest. You are higher than the highest, Lord. We thank you for your omnipotence. We thank you because you're omniscient, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. Because you are a rock, and there is no rock like you, and there is no God like you. Among the gods, who is like unto thee, O Lord, will bless and exalt your name. Hallowed be your name forever and ever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Like never before, I know that I have been called to pave the way for as many as are confused and do not know what to do, where to go, how to even begin. Why? Because God takes me through certain paths that sometimes I get so overwhelmed and when I'm about to ask God a question, God will tell me, you know what? Try to figure this out because if you cannot figure this out, you will not be able to help other people figure it out. There are days that I wake up like a day like today. After praying and doing everything I'm supposed to do, studying the word of God, confessing the word of God, and everything was going on well, all of a sudden, felt like this darkness just overwhelmed me and I was going you know into it I was sinking into some pits not literally but the way I felt I felt so heavy and I asked God is this the way people feel that makes them want to take their lives that makes them want to you know give up on whatever they are doing and God told me even much more. People who feel even deeper than you're feeling that now. And so I want to see how you're going to come out of this. Now, if you do not come out of this, it will be difficult to help other people to come out of this situation. When people just wake up, they're depressed, they're sad, or they're anxious about life. And they don't know what to do. What would you tell them? How would you help them to overcome it? Jesus had to come down to the earth. Why? Because he needed to see what it feels like to walk on this earth. And the same thing God does with the servants. If you want to help people, what God does, does with you is to take you through certain things. Why? So you are able to find a door out because you will need to show other people that door. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you're going through certain things today and you're thinking if, I, if you're going to survive it or you're thinking God doesn't like you or you're thinking the world has abandoned you. I want you to take courage. I want you to know that the reason why you're going through this is because God knows that you are able to get out of it. Because he will not let you go through any temptation that you are not able to wriggle out. Why? Because he will always make a way of escape. There's always a way of escape. And so when I woke up today, I started thinking, I'm a very, I can be very logical sometimes, you know, so I thinking, okay, so how did I sleep? What happened? And I remembered, I woke up well, I was okay. So how come I'm feeling this funny? How come I'm feeling so overwhelmed? How come I'm thinking I have too much to do? How come I'm thinking nothing is working for me? How come I'm thinking nobody is with me? How come I'm thinking I am all alone? How come I'm thinking I'm not experiencing the kind of love I want to experience? How come I'm thinking this? I never think this way most times. And God said, figure it out. Why? Because it is God's glory to hide a thing. And he wants me to 
have the honor of searching it out. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. But before I got to that point, you can't believe how I was feeling. I was struggling. Felt like I was fighting invisible forces. Why am I saying this to you? I'm trying to tell you that whatever you're going through is not exclusively created for you. The lot of people who are going through what you're going through, some die under the weight thereof and some survive. And so it's up to you to choose who you're going to follow. Is it those that gave up or those that weathered through the storm? Because God has given you all things that pertains unto life and godliness. God has given you the power to be able to overcome whatever you're going through. I know that if I sit down with you and you begin to tell me everything that has happened to you and where you are at this moment and what situation it is and how there is no solution, I'm sure we will not get out of this place. But I needed to know that that your problem. There are some other people that when you hear what they are going through, you will prefer what you have. I just wanted to know that the Lord is there with you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are there with me. You are my rod, you are my staff. You are there to comfort me. God is with you in the valley situation. God will never leave you. He will never, never forsake you. But you need to know that there are things that lead to the dark places that we find ourselves in. And that's why I am here this evening to tell you something. Life is a marketplace with choices. This world we're living in is a marketplace. Some people are buying and some people are selling. If you're buying, what you have right now are the things that you bought. And the things you bought were bought because of the choices that you made. When you go to a marketplace, you see a lot of stuff. I mean, you want to buy tomatoes, for, in for instance. You're going to see different types of tomatoes. What determines the kind of tomatoes that you buy is your values. Some people have a reason why they do whatever they want to do. But whatever reason it is, they are controlled by your value system. I was at a program at an event once, and I mean, we had a lot of mixed crowd, and there were pastors there, there were therapists there, there were, you know, different kind of people, there were entertainers, and, you know, couples, singles, and I was privileged to be one of those that were on stage, so people can ask them questions. And they asked, you know, different people on the stage, you know, if you're looking for a life partner or maybe you you want to remarry, what are the things you're supposed to look out for? And, you know, there were a lot of wonderful answers that were flying on stage. You know, the person, you know, should be a Christian, the should be a spirit-filled person, the person should be this, the person should know the Bible, the person should do this. And when it got to my turn, I was like, oh God, you guys have said virtually everything, but I want to tell you what I strongly believe. Look out for the person's value system. Even the interpretation of the scripture sometimes or most of the time they are controlled by our value system you can choose to interpret the scripture however you want to interpret them and that's why two christians can get married and they fight every day of their lives why they don't see things the same way they're not using the same lens 
to look at the life they are both living in. And your lenses are determined by different things. You know, where you're coming from, your, your foundation, your environment, I mean, the people around you, the, your education, you know, social status, things just, you know, determine what, how you see things. But I want to take you back to where I am coming from. I'm saying to you today that life is a marketplace with choices. And your choices are determined by your value system. Whenever you choose, you are saying this is what is important to me. And sometimes when we are anxious about certain things, the decisions we make they are informed by the anxiety. And so we make choices that will feed into the anxiety and then we get more anxious and then we go again and make another decision. Let me give you a life example. For instance, you're anxious about, you know, certain things. Maybe you don't have something in your house and you decide, I need to go shop. And then you go shop. But because anxiety is still there, you're looking at what should I buy? You're looking at, okay, maybe if I buy this, this is going to help this. If I buy this, this is going to help this. Now, you see what's going to happen. You will now keep buying and you're buying and you're buying and you're buying and you're buying because you are anxious about something that you've not really even determined what it is. And then it puts you in this spiral cycle where you begin to feed into what is eating you up. I don't want to, I'm trying to be a little bit vague so you can think deeper about your life and you know yourself. There are people, for instance, that believe I am I am I am getting too old. When am I gonna get married? And then at that level. They're thinking, oh my God, I need to make a choice. I need to begin to do certain things now that can, you know, speed up my getting married. And now what they're doing is they're not talking about marriage anymore. What they're saying is I need to calm this anxiety of mine. And so what I'm going to do is whatever any guy asks of me, I'm going to do it. Whatever the woman wants, I'm going to do it. And then the feeds are feeding into that anxiety. And when they begin to do whatever you know they are requested to do, they see that it's not it's not you know feeling the anxiety because the solution is not coming. And so they do more things, and then they are caught in that web because they did not sit down to ask themselves what kind of choice do I want to make? What is more important to me? When you go to a marketplace and you see the same products with different brand names, you sit down sometimes, you take the package and you begin to read. What advantage has this over this? Why is this costlier than this? And one wisdom I want to lend you today is let's durability inform your decision. Let's durability inform your decision. Beauty is beautiful. But how long are you going to have it? How can you, how, how long are you going to be able to sustain a beauty? Always choose durability. I am talking to somebody today who is about to make some choices. I'm talking to somebody today who is confused and anxious about life. 
Now, when I woke up, I was overwhelmed. I was anxious for no just cause. I was thinking about too many things. And then God told me, I put you through this because I need you to talk to somebody today. And you are that person. And I sat down and God asked me a question. Why are you anxious? And I started talking about all the things I needed to do, all the things I've not been able to do, and all the things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, you know, late doing. And God asked, which of this is the most important to you? I asked God, what do you mean? He said, in terms of durability, in terms of something that will make your life better. Which of these things that are overwhelming you is the most important to you? I said, I'm picking all those things one after the other, and I suddenly discovered I didn't need to do this. If I do it, it's okay. But it's not really something that is going to help me. There are things you, you think you should do. There are things people expect you to do. But the question is, do you have to do them? There are choices you think you should make. There are choices that people expect you to make. But the question is, how durable are those choices? What impact will they make in your life? Life is a marketplace. What you buy is determined by your values. And your values impact your life. Something about God is, God tells you what is going to happen if you choose this and what will happen if you choose that. But God doesn't make choices for us. You know, hear people say, if, why is God allowing this? Why is God allowing that? We have a free will. We have a free will. But your choice will determine your well-being. God says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospering. It's a wish. I just wish that you're okay. I wish you're okay. I wish you're doing well. But ultimately, it's your choice that will determine that. And your values will determine your choice. And so today I am saying, Look deeper into your values. And when you are choosing, let it be something that is durable. Never make a very, very, you know, impulsive decision concerning something that will impact your life in future. Do not eat instant noodles with your life. Instant things are good to quench a hunger because at that point you don't have a choice. But they're not healthy to your body. Don't make it a habit. Don't make it a habit to eat things that are half cooked. Don't make it a habit to live unhealthy. So I'm saying that because sometimes we do not have a choice. What am I still saying? Life is a market. What are you buying in this world? I woke up, I was overwhelmed, and God asked me, what are you buying? What, are, what choices are you making? What is getting you so anxious? I sat down, I was like, what is getting me anxious? 
I didn't know what to do. I said, I started pacing around the house. I said, I know what I'm going to do. I said, let me go and swing. And I need to calm down. I need to figure out why I feel this way. And I know nobody will be able to help me. I have prayed already, but I'm still feeling this way. There has to be a reason. It was the choices I was making. And so by the time I discovered the things that were getting me anxious and overwhelming me were things I do not really need. I can do without them. At the moment I made a decision, every reminder of those things, I went to my email, I started deleting them and telling myself, you don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need this. I took care of them and I became okay. And God said, how are you doing now? I said, I'm doing fine. He said, go tell my people. You have a choice in this world because life is a market. There are different things in this world. There are different decisions that you can make. But make sure you're making decisions that are durable. And that is going to take me to a scripture I want to share. Of course, before we do that, I love to share the book of Proverbs. The Bible says a you know, Proverbs, Proverbs will allow you to understand the deep wisdom of the wise. And so today is the 10th and I'm going to be sharing Proverbs chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says the wage of the righteous leads to life and the gain of the wicked to sin. Now I'm trying to link the scripture with what I've been saying. Life is a market place. The wage of the righteous leads to life. That is a righteous man is working, is working, is working. The salary of the righteous man will always lead him to life. And the salary of the wicked man will always guide him to a sinful place. Verse 17 says, whoever is instruction is on the path to life. And he who rejects reproof leads others astray. That is to say, if you choose, I'm going to always obey instruction and then you're already walking the path of life. And if you're someone that does not like correction, you don't like instruction, you don't like reproof, you're not just going to be going in the path of destruction, but you will carry other people along. And that brings me to a point that says, your choices. One of the choices you make in life are the people you move with. The Bible says the friend of the wise shall be wiser and the friend of the fool shall be destroyed. See this, anyone that rejects reproof will lead other people astray. There are some people in our lives who are already missing it and they're looking for other people to carry along. So you have to be careful. Those people may be the reason for your anxiety. There are certain people that when you knock them off your life, your life will gain stability. You don't need them in your life because you're not hearing God. You're not hearing your pastor. You're not hearing the word of God because these people are also in your ears and they're not letting you hear what God wants you to hear. Whoever eats instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the ways of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is on the law of his law. Only does he meditate day and night. Bounce that man shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, they make rich, they do not add any sorrow. Life is a market. 
anything you buy in this world that is not making you rich and is adding sorrow onto you, you already know that that product is not a blessing of God. Because the blessing of God makes rich, it doesn't add any sorrow onto you. I said today, I woke up, I was overwhelmed, I was sad, I started thinking, you know, rejected, I felt unloved, I felt uncared for, I felt, you know, these things just, it, it doesn't have to be real, they're just in the mind. The enemy knows how to manufacture those feelings and implant them into your mind. And you say, maybe you didn't pray. No, I already prayed. I was fine when I was praying. I was fine when I was studying. I was fine when I was declaring. I just got up at my bed and I started going out. And all of a sudden, I felt myself going into that dark place. And I started thinking of so many other things I needed to do that I've not done. People should have been around to help me out. How come this is happening? And that is the lie of the devil. And I asked God, why? And God said, that is a key to what you need to tell my people. If you don't feel it, you will not be able to help them. I need you to feel just a fracture of what some people are going through. Waking up in the morning, they don't know what to do with their lives. What will you tell them? And he said, life is a marketplace. Everything you see, everything you have, you bought. You made a decision, you made a choice, and you bought something. And that thing is in your possession, and that is affecting your well-being. It's a decision that you make. And the worst thing is, the devil tells you that your decision cannot be undecided. That is a lie. The reason why there's a clean on an eraser with a pencil is so that when you write and make a mistake, you erase. You're not God. You're man. You can undo whatever you have done. And so I need you today to begin to choose and to begin to go over the decisions you've made. What is it that is keeping your life in the dark? What is it that is getting you anxious? What is it that is getting you depressed? It's in your possession. It is a decision you made. It is something you bought. It is a friend you acquired. It is something, it is a project you got yourself into. It is a signature that you appended. There is something that is keeping you, whatever it takes to get yourself out of that and make a better decision, you better start doing it. And then you'll be free. Freedom is available to those who are willing and obedient. You will eat the good of the land if you're willing and obedient just tell yourself i don't need to keep you know around this thing that is making me sweat every day it's i, I walked into this myself i see how the two legs i can walk out if it's so difficult to do it ask god his strength is made perfect in your weakness. Life is a marketplace. There are choices. Whatever you have is your choice. The brand you purchased was your choice. You said the other one was more expensive. Usually, durable things are more expensive. It's better to pay the price for something that will last long than to invest into something that is not lasting. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 15 to 20. The Bible says, See, I have said before you today, life and good, death, I need to get this right, Uh, 
All right. I have said before you today, I'm trying to make sure the, the, the translation I have. Yeah. I said with life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. What is this saying? I have said before you, this is life in this world, this is good, this is death, and this is evil. He now said, see, if you obey the commandments of the Lord, if you make that choice, if, and he said you should, that I command you today by loving the Lord your God and by walking in his ways and keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. You will walk in the path of obedience and then you'll walk in the path of life and multiplication. He says, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Remember, God is just advising. God is saying, if you make this choice, this is what you stand to gain. You stand to gain life and multiplication. You stand to gain a blessing of the Lord. He said, I'll bless you there. He says, verse 17, but if your heart turns away, if you choose the other side and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. I am not saying I'm going to curse you or make you perish. I'm saying that where you're going, that is what is in stock. Perishing. You shall not live long in the land and that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. Life is a marketplace, and your choices will determine what you possess. And I said, your value system will also determine your choices. The Bible says, choose life so you may live. Because the other side, there is something. You're either walking this path or walking this. There's no gray area. There is no one leg in and one leg out. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. And God is saying, please choose life. Choose this path. I am not forcing you. I'm not enforcing it. You have your free will. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying it will be better for you. It's profitable for you to choose life. So today I decided I was going to choose life. And I began to tell myself I am not going through this path. Even though there were not bad things, but the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Anything that is causing you and so much anxiety, anything that is causing you, you know, so much pain, and you keep holding on to it, believe it, it's going to change tomorrow. Why don't you take a step backwards and reveal your decisions? Maybe you may not need to totally abort that operation or that project. But you may want to create certain boundaries around it so it doesn't affect you. Anything that is limiting you and is not making you go forward, you don't want to wake up every day feeling depressed, feeling sad over a decision that you made by your own choice. You are not God 
that will tell yourself, I cannot change. You are mad. You can't change. You can change decisions. You can say no, thank you. You can tell somebody that you promised that I'm sorry I can't go with this promise. I made certain calls today and I just said I'm sorry I cannot go with this. I made I, I, I wrote certain text messages to some people, you know, that they were supposed to do one or two things for me. I just said I'm so sorry because of logistics. I won't be able to pursue this. The person that made person made eraser, erase things. And the free. Don't put yourself in bondage and lock the door and, and, and throw away the keys. On Sunday, I was talking about forgiveness. That's one of the things that we do to, to cage ourselves. You're angry with somebody and you can't move forward. Why do that to yourself? The person doesn't want to say sorry. Just tell yourself, I let you go. I will just have anything to do with you. Simple. But don't keep yourself in any cage that makes you stagnant in life. Life is a market. Make a choice and make a good one at that. Make a choice. Life is a market. Make a choice and make a good one. Make a choice. God will always help you with the choices you make. Remember, a strength is made perfect in your weakness. Sometimes we make some choices and it feels like we cannot turn away from those choices. Go to God and say, I don't think I've made the right choice. Teach me what to do. Make a way of escape for me. I, will, I need to escape this. I can't, I can't keep doing this. It's not helping me. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, it said, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. You need to know something. This you're seeing is not all that is about me. There is an outer man and there is an inner man. There is an outer man. When you're making certain choices, it is hard on the outer man. But the inner man is growing thereby. The harder your choices are to do the right thing, the harder it is on this outer man that feels like it's perishing. But I need you to set your eyes and your heart on the inner man because that is enduring. That is a durable. Even though our out man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. I made uh, some decisions today that were not so good on the flesh because I've already planned things. But they were causing me some anxiety. God said, make a choice that is durable make a choice that will help you in the future on the long run don't make choices that just helps you temporarily the bible says for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory for this light affliction, for this denial of the flesh, for this no that you're saying to yourself, the Bible says it's depositing something in your spirit, man. When you take away from this outer man, the inner man is getting developed. For instance, when you're fasting, and you're taking away from the flesh. You're building your inner man. When you say no to sin. When you say no, I am not sleeping with that person. I am not married to you. It's tough on the flesh. 
Let nobody tell you it's so easy to live in righteousness. It's not. But see, you're making a choice so that you are your, your inner man can be built up. You are forsaking something that is temporary for something that is enduring, that is everlasting. The light affliction. The body, the flesh, sometimes have to be pummeled. You have to do something that is going to not make you so comfortable. But I want you to rejoice and know that the choice I'm making is so that my inner man can flourish. Our, for our life affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why would do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. The things which we see, they are temporary. But the things which we do not see, the Bible says in the Bible, says, the things which you are saying were created by the word of God, which are not seen. The things which you see, Humans love to follow things which they see, things they can feel. We follow the things that gratify our flesh. But God is saying, make a choice today. Life is a marketplace. Every day you wake up, you wake up into the market. And you say, I'm here again to buy something. My question is, what will you buy tomorrow? What choices are you going to make tomorrow? Some people decided, I will go to school. Some decided, I will go to school. It's your choice. But never blame anybody for the choice you make. And don't make somebody else pay for it. If you're buying, buy it at your own expense. Life is a market. Don't make your parents pay for the choices you're making that are not enduring. Don't make your spouse pay for the choices that you're making that are not enduring. Don't say, well, it makes me happy. Then stick to the consequences as well. Be sure to tell yourself, even if it's not working well, I am going to suffer alone. Unfortunately, that's not what life is about. People around you are going to pay as well. So many years ago, I was battling, I was in this, you know, typing battle with my husband. And it was like, yeah, we can pay this, we'll pay later. And I said, no, because if anything goes wrong with the finances, you alone will suffer. I will suffer as well. Let us make a decision to focus on the one that is enduring. He says, I will rebuild devourers for your sake. And so let us pay our tithes and offering so God can pour a blessing on us that we do not have enough room to contain so that God can rebuke devourers for our sakes. Of course, the first time it didn't work well and guess what happened? He lost his job and was suffered for years. You're not the only one that's going to suffer. Other people are going to suffer. If you're in the hospital, people are going to suffer with you. You are feeling the pain, but somebody's going to be staying there overnight. Somebody's not sleeping well at home because you chose not to choose life. You don't study the word of God to show yourself approved. Life is a marketplace. 
Make your choices and make your choices. Make them count. Sit down and ask yourself, why am I deciding on this? Why did you choose that job? Don't tell me God told you to pick that job, even though he knows it's going to take you away from the house of God for weeks, for months. You say it's God's, it's God's blessing. God is not going to bless you with something that takes you away from his presence. Never. Never. It's your decision. It's your choice. You are the one making those choices. I'm a marriage and family therapist. I associate and I see couples a lot. Your spouse is your choice. I ask people, did you say red flags? Yes. I said, so what happened? You still made a choice. And now the consequences are here. Unfortunately, you're not the only one suffering. Even the children that God gave you are also suffering. So why make a choice that is temporary, that is not durable? Why make a choice on things? Why put a stake on things that are temporary, that are just, you know, there to, 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 to gratify your flesh? Oh, she's so pretty. Did you see her? Then you, somebody asks, is she a Christian? Oh, no, 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 no. But, you know, she makes me happy. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. Don't be unequally yoked. It's, it's an advice. Don't be unequally yoked. Because of the future. Ask people that are married. They will tell you, if I could go back in time, I will make another choice. If I could just go back in time, people go and buy cars, me close And sometimes I would say, why did I do this? Why not make this choice? It was your choice. The next time you want to make a choice, ask yourself, are my values in place? Are they in the right places? So I can make a decision. Why? Because the values you have determine your well-being. Choices. Life is a market. Like I said, you wake up tomorrow, you have another opportunity to make a choice. Life is a marketplace. There are different opportunities. You can make different choices. Let your choice be determined by the inner man and not by the outer man. Endure the light affliction of the flesh. Endure it a little bit more. And make a decision that will favor you on the long run. Make a decision that will favor your family on the long run. Don't make a decision that can just help you temporarily. Don't make decisions that you will not be proud of tomorrow. Cut off from things that are killing you. Your anxiety will leave if you begin to see life as a market. Make a right choice. I'm Reverend Olufolake Ike, and this is Positive Influence Family outreach ministry today i'm just talking about life being a market and that means the choices belong to you please remember that this world things that we, make, we choose they didn't choose us we chose them so let's begin to decide right and i said your value system will help you god said in his word choose life i've said before you life and death choose life so you can leave choose god Choose the word of God. You know, don't run away from God's presence. Don't choose the world over the word. Don't say, I need to enjoy myself now that I have the time. Don't let the enemy set a trap for you. Be in the right place at the right time with the right people. Make 
your friends, people that you're sure are going to push you to life. Don't be amongst people that will sink you. Make right choices on a daily basis. It's a daily basis thing. Every day you rise up, tell God to help you to choose right. Life is a market place. If you're listening to me, please share this video you know, to other people around you. Show them your love and your care about them. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe and click on the notification button. And the Lord God will enlarge your coast as you begin to live right and to choose right in the mighty name of